So the next speaker is Ife Lo, who's going to talk about the Marion survey. Hello, can you hear me? <laughs> so, um, hi, uh, for those who uh, don't know me, I'm a, a fifth year graduate student here at UC Santa Cruz. Um, uh, my uh, PhD advisor is Alexi Lieto, so um, I'm very happy to uh, introduce our quite new survey called the Marion Survey, which is a medium band imaging survey uh, using the dark energy camera DCAM in Chile. Uh, to the primary science goal is to get uh, a lot of uh, you know um, star forming dwarf galaxies at redshift of about 0.1. Um, so uh, this is a quite small but growing um, collaboration. Uh, my advisor Alexi and uh, Jenny Green uh, at Princeton are the co-PI of the uh, uh, project. So, just want to mention we just recently I just recently posted uh, our first Marian paper on the archive uh, like last last month. So, if you are interested, please go to uh, check it out. Okay, so um, let me talk a little bit about uh, the motivation, like why we want to do this minute uh, um, Marian survey. So. Basically, um, from uh, you know uh, several speakers uh, earlier today, we know there's you know controversy and also uh, different kind of models, series um, from series side, and also try to constrain the previous uh, say uh, observations on the small scale uh, for sorry dwarf galaxies. Um, but the thing is, you if you want to say um, how to say uh, constrain those models, you need more observation. You need better observation to say, um, basically, pin down the uh, degeneracy of those uh, kind of series. So, um, um, say, um, previous study, uh, and also some of the speaker mentioned uh, earlier, uh, mainly using the um, rotation curves of the uh, dwarf galaxies uh, at nearby or, you know, kind of um, different redshifts uh, to get the halo measurement. Uh, say the halo mass, or the you know profile of the halos, inner part of the halos, uh, to uh, you know constrain uh, the dark matter halo properties. Uh, one, well, all, this is very good, but one thing, one issue for rotation curves is it's only probably inner part of the halo, um, which say basically all the baryon you know locate in say very central part of the halo, say you know 10 kiloparsecs. Even you use you know gas measurement, it can go basically. 10%, uh, 20% of the you know very radius of the halo. So the halo can go all the way to very far distance where you don't have basically any baryon to constrain uh, your rotation curves. Um, and also rotation curves are also you know kind of hard to measure if you are in a chaos you know mass uh, dynamical system. Uh, it's really hard to, to constrain you know the halo mass from the rotation curve. Um, so alternatively. <laughs> There's a very powerful technique called weak gravitational lensing or galaxy galaxy lensing. Basically, we uh, measure the distortion of the background source galaxies um, and to infer you know, the halo profile, basically the dynamic mass of the uh, foreground um, lenses, uh, in our case, will be the dwarf galaxies. Uh, so, this technique is really powerful, can constrain the halo uh, profile, halo mass out to, you know, uh, the viral radius were even, you know, um, distant, we'll say, uh, larger than that. But the thing is, you need to uh, to get a larger, you know, really large sample of lenses to, to get a decent uh, lensing signal to noise um, to constrain your models. Um, so um, the question is, can we do lensing, can we measure lensing for dwarf galaxies in, you know, this generation or, you know, you know next generation? Uh, uh, surveys uh, like in the near future. So we did kind of, you know, like a forecast uh, estimate. So actually uh, proof it can actually be done by say, uh, for example, HSC, the Hypers program on the eight meter telescope in, uh, in, in Hawaii, the, uh, in the Subaru telescope. And also like uh, um, say Euclid just launched, uh, uh, Rubin and, and Roman in the future. Uh, will give you, if you just consider an uh, apparent magnitude limit uh, for those dwarf galaxies, it will be uh, quite complete, you know, uh, down to say 10 to the 8, 10 to the 7 uh, in the, uh, say, Russia 0.1, 0.2 uh, regime. Um, so this is good. There are, you know, a lot of galaxies, a lot of, you know, lenses to, to measure to stack uh, the lensing signal noise. Um, 
So we did a bunch of, you know, uh, theoretical sort of prediction, like how well we can constrain if we know, you know, the redshifts of those, um, say, uh, dwarf lenses uh, with basically this uh, kind of prediction. Um, so basically the lensing signal noise is dominated by the number of lenses, which is, you know, a source if expected. You have more lenses to stack, you have better uh, signal. So for different survey, we can constrain, you know, basically the arrow bar. Uh, this is a, a model predicted lensing measurement with, you know, arrow bar for different surveys. So the thing is, if we can detect all the dwarf galaxies in those survey, uh, below, say, redshift point two, how well we can measure the uh, lensing or the halo profile, which uh, turns out to be really good. You know, the, the, the arrow bar is re really small, you know, for, for lensing. Um, but the thing is, this prediction is based on a huge assumption that we have stacks, we have redshifts for all the dwarf galaxies, which is basically impossible for, for those, you know, deep surveys, you know, uh, HIC or, or Roman. Uh, so we need redshifts. That's where, uh, you know, Marion com comes from. So the Marion survey, um, we built two medium band filters, N708 and 540, for H alpha and O3 at redshift point one. We got um, 64 nights on the dark energy camera, the 4-meter CDIO uh, telescope in Chile. And uh, we are mapping about 800 square degree uh, in the HSC uh, wide field. Um, so um, the core science goal, as I mentioned, is to constrain the halo property for star from dwarf galaxy. But we also have other science goals, which I will briefly mention uh, in a minute. Um, so we did a bunch of, you know, uh, optimization uh, for the lensing signal noise. So it turns out the uh, you know, optimized lensing signal noise for our future set will be, uh, you know, about 30 or so, which is pretty good for lensing. Um, and this is our kind of, you know, sample dwarf galaxy, just, you know, um, the picture uh, you can have in mind, those star forming blue, you know, dwarf galaxy from, say, uh, like LMC-like to SMC-like or to slightly lower masses. They're pretty faint in, in optical, well, comparing to, you know, previous survey, we're talking about galaxies down to 23rd magnitude in I-band, uh, and most of them are, them are star forming, so that's the point for Marion, because, you know, we are using the medium and filter to capture their emission lines. Um, so we did some kind of uh, prediction with the Marion filter design, how the photo Z, uh, you know, would be like, um, with the Marion filter, filter set. Turns out the, Mar uh, the, the photo Z um, from Marion plus HSC broadband would be pretty good. For the precision would be 0.01. It's good enough for lensing. And this is uh, our um, Marion filter uh, uh, tra uh, transmission curves uh, compared to HSC in the background. And uh, you see basically when the emission line move into and out to the uh, filters you can capture basically the information where the rest of it is. Um, and uh, we built a filter, actually, uh, we asked a filter um, company, design company uh, in, in Japan, a Saki company, uh, to make the filter for us. Basically just send the design and they made the filter for us and uh, uh, the filter transmission here looks really good. So we started uh, the observation. And um, so now the Marin survey is basically 60% uh, complete uh, on the sky, still ongoing. Uh, we probably will finish earlier next year. Um, so we reduced the data, we already have a bunch of data, uh, with the actually uh, modified version of LSC pipeline, uh, which can easily apply to future surveys. And uh, we use a photometry called the GAP. Photometry is kind of uh, new, not, not that new, but uh, not well used. Um, for, for uh, the community, but it seems like this photometry can provide really good uh, color, um, you know, um, better than traditional photometry. Uh, so, because for the photos, we really want the true color, the best color. Uh, so we, we use this uh, kind of, uh, so this is a standard output from the LSST pipeline, um, which should be used more and more in the future. So let's compare the prediction. So on the left, I, uh, plotting the uh, mock photometry uh, I used, you know, to, to design a future. So I band minus N708, R band min minus N540. So it's basically the median band subtract the continuum down, you know, by the, the broadband. Well, uh, not quite, but uh, similar. Um, say, um, 
And uh, as a function of redshift, so you see those you know, chunks, uh, flux axis. Those are basically emission lines we want to detect. Uh, so that's the mock, and this is actually what we got. Uh, so yeah, I think basically all the features we want are there, although there's some noise, because you know, there are always systematic uncertainties and you know, uh, say, um, um, some, some uh, errors um, that I you know, cannot, uh, cannot uh, add in the, in the mock. Um, but uh, in general, it's pretty good. So uh, now we just want to run the full of these and compare with SPECSI. So uh, before that, uh, we um, need a SPECSI calibration sample. So we're collecting SPECSI uh, basically to do the calibration. Um, uh, we are you know, running different programs on, on CAC, on Magellan, and actually DESI. We wrote a DESI accelerator program uh, to get SPECSI down to 23rd magnitude. Uh, we have collected more than 5,000 spectra from Marianne, um, and actually the number is increasing. And we also combine those specs with previous surveys. Um, but I mean, 23rd magnitude is kind of uh, deep, so uh, not much from those. Um, and we run the photo Z with uh, you know template fitting. Uh, this is uh, with the help of a uh, uh, visiting undergrad student, uh, Yifan Li from Peking University. Uh, by the way, she's applying for grad school this year. So we um, Use kind of, we generate our own templates for Marian target dwarfs to improve the photo Z performance. This is you know, the photo Z performance uh, on out to redshift one. If we zoom in, it's actually pretty good for the Marian target ra uh, redshift range, and the uh, sigma photo Z position is like 0.01. It's basically achieve our goal, although there are some of you know, outliers, but uh, they can be uh, cleared out. Um, so let me really just uh, briefly give you a very preliminary results. This is, this, I think, the first time I show this plot in a conference. Uh, we just had this plot, you know, very recently. Uh, so with the help of uh, postdoc here, Sven, we uh, basically measure the lensing signal. Uh, we do have a detection. The lensing signal noise is uh, about 10. This is only 20% of marine footprint. And uh, we can actually uh, start to do some very, say, preliminary analysis with the data. Uh, so we first, you know, just uh, fit a halo mass um, with an NFW profile to see whether it's on the stellar mass halo mass relation. So here they are. So, uh, well, although this is really a very, say, early stage of the you know, survey, we only have 20% of the data, so not quite, uh, you know, deep enough. Um, but, you know, with this data, it's already kind of, you know, uh, those two data points, they're, you know, just uh, two mass beams. Um, we actually are um, uh, constrained by, uh, say, uh, the previous star mass halo mass relation from uh, Peters and uh, Aldo's uh, star mass halo mass relation. So, so this is good. Um, yeah, but again, this is very preliminary. So um, uh, we are going to do some modeling work uh, with simulations and uh, you know, theory. Um, and uh, let me briefly mention, you know, what else can we do with Marian? So if you look at the pictures from HRC, those Marian galaxies are really uh, fantastic. But if you look at their, you know, uh, Marian medium band images are even more, you know, so you see those clumps in the dwarf galaxies. Uh, they are captured by our medium band filters. Uh, so we are actually also doing some galaxy science, you know, more, more directly with uh, spectral follow-up and also those medium band morphologies to see those emission line distributions. And uh, also, it turns out that medium band can also probe line alpha emitters at higher redshifts, at redshifts three and five. Uh, we actually run a DASI follow-up on those, and it turns out the success rate is 30, uh, above 70% uh, um, you know, uh, uh, success rate, and we do um, you know, find a kind of, uh, you know, lamma alpha emitter, uh, you know, over density region in cosmos uh, pretty efficiently. So um, I will just leave the summary here. And uh, uh, by the way, I'm on job market this fall. So um, if you're interested in Marian, also like medium and survey, dwarf galaxies, just come talk to me. And uh, uh, we also want to hear thoughts from, from Sirius, uh, you know, because we're doing the modeling. So yeah, that's all. Thank you. That was a great talk. Um, I was wondering when when you consider surveys like Saga and Elves and other 
you know, local volume surveys. Um, could you talk a little bit more about where you see signs overlap with them and then cases where you think Marion would provide something that they're not providing? Um, first of all, Marion is a little bit more distant than Saga or Elves. You know, they, they are like, uh, you know, 20 megaparts, like 40 megaparts, something like that. Marion go all the way to Russia point one. So it's larger, you know, larger volume, less, you know, uh, environment, say, uh, local environment uh, dependence. Um, but we are basically probing the higher mass end of the dwarf galaxy's population, or low mass galaxy, basically, 10 to the 8, 10 to the 9, uh, SMC, LSC like So Saga and Elves go uh, lower masses, but they are, you know, smaller samples, so it's a little bit different. Uh, also, also, we're measuring lensing, so this is a little bit different, but definitely overlap, uh, some, share some uh, science interests. Okay, so we're running behind, but one quick question while the speaker sets up. Uh, if he's, uh, David Koo, Santa Cruz, um, you seem to have a large sample, which seems to have enough res spatial resolution. If you divide your sample to, say, the smaller third or smaller half and repeat your uh, halo, do you see any difference in those yeah, subsets? Yeah, that's uh, our very next step. <laughs> uh, we're, yeah, we're all going to be in with, you know, mass, mass, star formation rate, or radius, but that depends on how large sample we have, right? Because we only have, you know, a part, you know, small fraction of our final footprint. So yeah, so if I've been very finding now, I don't, I wouldn't see much, you know, uh, signal right now. But uh, it's definitely what we're gonna do. Thank you. Great. Sorry. Great thing. Uh, let's thank the speaker. Thank you.